the coming months, you are going to be able to upload a single image. And from that image, AI will create an entire three-dimensional, I would say maybe even triple A quality game. If you all have seen recently, Elon Musk announced his own AI game development studio. And as someone who both runs a game development studio and is also studying AI and machine learning in graduate school, I think I know the reasons why. And if you want to find out the reasons why too, keep watching this video. The longer you watch this video, the crazier things are going to get. You guys remember the whole flaming hand trick that I did using AI post-process rendering, right? Well, what if I told you I can also apply that exact same technology to my face and I can even change my voice. I can become a different person or even, I, I mean, I guess a different species. Stuff be getting crazy in the AI world, and we're going to be talking about a lot of that stuff today. If you don't know who I am, for whatever reason, I am the guy that has shown you some of the craziest tech demos in the world, not just in video games, but in today's video, we actually are going to be talking about a lot of video game related AI stuff as well. So buckle in, it's going to get wild. And if you're interested in learning how to do any of this stuff for yourself, join our Discord server link down below. And we have meetings every single Friday where we're actually in the process of building our own AI that we can use to write software with. It's, it's going to be fun. I want to start this by talking about a project called Google Genie 2. And this is basically going to change everything and really also the tip of the iceberg because I'm going to be talking about every single aspect of AI being used for video game development. But Google Genie 2 is definitely one of the more insane applications of AI for creating games and probably also one of the more just brute force versions where, yeah, yeah, you just basically ask AI to make a game for you and it just happens. Now you all probably remember my video about the Minecraft AI game. Now that project has hit millions of users over the last couple of months ever since it was announced, which is crazy because that's more players than like games on Steam typically get. So the AI gaming space has entered the arena. That is now a genre. And Google Genie 2 is the next evolution of that. Now, the concept behind Google Genie 2 is you upload an image, and from that image, it makes an entire playable game. <laughs> uh, you have inputs, just like you had inputs when you played the Minecraft AI game. You can use your mouse, you can use WASD, but instead of it just being Minecraft, you upload an image of, I, I guess, really any anything. I mean, I guess you could upload a screenshot of another game or you could upload a picture of real life, whatever. And from that point in time, it is now a playable game from a single <laughs> image, <laughs> which is ab absolutely insane. And I am sure this is going to make a lot of game developers mad that this exists. But again, if, if you're mad about this stuff, you, you have to understand <laughs> I'm just the messenger, dude. I don't make these things. I just tell you that they exist in life because this is the world that we live in now. So let's dive into this. So there are a large number of demonstrations of Genie 2 where you can have everything from like a kid's game to something like a Lara Croft adventure game to like a space themed, I don't know, like dead space style thing. You really just upload an image and from that image, you have a playable game, which is crazy. And it has a lot of the same issues that the Minecraft thing had, where there are definitely elements of it just feels like a fever dream the entire time, where there's just like little things that, uh, that just don't make sense visually. But compared to the Minecraft thing, I would actually say that this is a significantly more stable version that is significantly more playable like the continuity is more there it is the next evolution of that same minecraft thing and i am really curious to see how much better they can make this because as you can see i mean there's gameplay that looks like witcher 3 there's gameplay where you're like riding a horse or you have like a boat or you're on a freaking desert or like all sorts of stuff just from people uploading a single image and then playing an entire game from that image. 
which is uh yeah that's that's crazy how stable is this going to be how far are they going to be able to push this i don't know but google genie 2 is definitely a project that i am very very interested in and i am going to be following but I know there's a lot of you guys that are not interested in the traditional AI gaming concept because the whole thing of having AI video, there's lots of little artifacts and glitches that people don't enjoy. So in terms of having actual AI gameplay footage, not all of you guys are into that. But that's where we go into not using AI in order to generate game footage. Next, I want to talk about all of the people who are using AI to actually generate games. Now, for those of you who do not know, and I highly recommend that you join our Discord server so you can learn about this, our community and a whole bunch of other communities that are researching and implementing AI are building our own AI so we can actually integrate it into our software development system. And once you have AI integrated into your software development system, it will literally write code for you. You can give it a folder, you can give it a workspace, and you can just ask it to do things. Like you can say, hey, make me a website, please and it will generate all of the code for that website. And then, hey, you click on it, that website is there. Now, this is why I think that a lot of people, everybody should be learning how to program. And if you are interested in learning how to program, I highly recommend, again, join our server because we got a lot going on there. But AI is now getting to a point where you don't have to talk to it just on chat GPT where you ask it to make you funny dad jokes. You can actually integrate it onto your work computer and work with it as if it is a coworker. And not only that, the AI itself can sit there and teach you how to be a better programmer every single day. In fact, that's what I've been doing over the last like six months. I wake up, I log in, and I train myself on how to program using AI to teach me. And then I go to sleep, wake up the next morning morning, do it all over again. And there are companies that are implementing that training process that's AI integrated into their workflows, into their onboarding process, into their ongoing training process. And I got to tell you, the companies that are doing that, they are going to be so ahead of the curve here in the next couple of years, because the efficiency rate of using AI to actually train your employees how to be better at tasks is, it's crazy effective compared to traditional training methods. But you know what? We'll talk about that later because let's talk a little bit more about people actually using AI, not just to generate images or generate video, but generate actual code, generate actual software, generate actual games. One of the people who is probably the best example of developers that have been showcasing how you can do this is this individual called Rafal. Now, Rafal is a really cool guy. I highly recommend that you go subscribe to him because he is doing some really cool stuff. And he has been creating games using AI, not creating like the Genie 2 thing where you can play an image, essentially. He is integrating AI into the entire development pipeline from generating models to generating levels to generating code, the whole thing in order to create highly playable games. And I got to say, the games that he's been generating look better than probably 99% of the games that I see on the Steam store right now. This is a game I made almost entirely using AI tools, and it only took a few hours to make. In my previous video, I showed off Gaussian splatting, where you could create laser scans, essentially, of realistic 3D environments. And I have been following a number of different studios that have been using that to train AI on how to generate environments. Now, Rafal here has been creating this game utilizing a tool called Meshi, which has also been training AI to create 3D models. And these tools are getting really, really good. And you can do a variety of things. You can actually take assets and turn those into 3D models. So you can actually go to Midjourney or other AI image generators and take that image, give it to Meshi, and Meshi will turn that image into an actual asset. And people have already been developing workflows for this. So I have actually seen development teams where they will use Midjourney to create individual pieces of armor, just pictures of individual pieces. And then they will take that and they will turn it into a model using Meshi and compile the entire 3D character 
in the game. And not only can you utilize Meshi to generate characters, you can use it to generate environment pieces. You can use it to generate really anything that you need in order to make a game. And a lot of the stuff that it outputs is really up there with some of the best marketplace content on the Unreal Engine marketplace or the Unity marketplace. Although I will say in terms of topology, it has a ways to go because some of these meshes aren't particularly well optimized, but it is getting there. And as you can see with Rafal, he has now created a complete game, utilizing not only this to generate the models, but also utilizing this to help him generate code. Because Unreal Engine and a whole bunch of other games are utilizing Blueprint, which is essentially coding, but it's visual. You have blocks that you actually stitch together. And as I showed you previously, you can already integrate AI into your software development workflow, and it will generate code for you. And Blueprint is essentially just code. Now, there is no AI tool, to my knowledge, that can actually generate Blueprint code currently. But the craziest thing is, is it is code, and AI is just kind of a general intelligence machine. So what you can do is even though you can't get AI to generate blueprint code for you, what you can do is you can send it a screenshot of your blueprint code, and it will tell you what to change in order to implement the features that you want. So my expectation is that here soon, there will be an AI tool that is directly integrated into engines like Unreal Engine or Unity, where you can just say what you want and it will automatically generate that code in Blueprint in the game. I'd say we're three to six months away from something like that being Honestly, three to six months is, is probably longer. It, it, it could be a month or two away from happening. And as you can see, after going through the entire process, Rafal has a completed game. It looks pretty good. I mean, honestly, it looks about as good as a lot of other very small indie games. And it's only going to continue getting better, these tools, these workflows. And while Rafal here still had to manually do some game development himself. He is an experienced game developer before. He's just utilizing some AI tools to help him with his workflow. AI also does have the ability to generate from scratch complete games. And that's what I'm going to wrap up this video with. So this is actually my project that I've been creating as part of my degree where I'm studying AI in graduate school for the last while I'm going to be graduating this summer. And this is a website that I created entirely myself, 100%, no other help, by myself, called autogamedeveloper.ai. You can go there right now. Link is down in the description. And this is a system that will actually generate a complete game for you. Now, it doesn't have the ability to create games like what I just showed Rafal making. And Rafal, that's kind of like an example of a human working with an AI to make a game. But autogamedev.ai is an example of 100% game development automation. You say an idea and that idea comes to life. Right now, the AI model that I have making the games, I have it fine-tuned on Flash games that are open source on GitHub and other free libraries like matter.js and uh, a couple of other really cool open source tools that people usually use to make 2D games and stuff. But it can make a game utilizing those 2D libraries. So if you go say, hey, make me a top-down shooter game, it'll make you a simple, fun, but totally playable top-down shooter game. Definitely go give that a look because that's where everything is going. And as far as the future of AI, because I know that there's a lot of people who are kind of like freaking out and like, man, you know, now that it's this easy to create software, what is this going to mean? And I'm going to tell you what I think this is going to mean. I think in the next couple of years, honestly, probably next year, I think your entire experience with technology is going to change. I think your entire experience with your phone, with computers, everything is going to change because what's going to happen is you are going to be able to take your phone just like this, like this right here, and you're going to be able to say, hey, I need an app to track my weight. 
and it will create that for you. No more going on the app store and finding some app that has probably microtransactions or something like that to do the things that you need. If there is an application that you need, you will literally be able to just say it and it will exist. And I know that there's a lot of people that are saying, oh, you know, what about the game developers? What about the software developers? It is definitely going to disrupt that entire industry hard. It already is, and it's going to continue to do so. But at the same time, I think that there's going to be a lot of consumers that are going to be really happy to have the ability to say, hey, you know, like I need a planner to track my son's school work or something like that. And you're going to say, hey, Siri, can you literally make me an app so I can track my son's homework? And it will just make it for you. That is the future that we're going into. And I think what's going to happen is what is going to be important isn't necessarily the ability to write code. Although writing code and understanding code is still going to be important because once the app is generated, you're still going to be able to go in and edit that app and having knowledge on how to do that is going to be important, even if you're asking the AI to do it for you. Because if you're more informed on the software that you're writing, it's easier to tell the AI what to change and how to change it. Um, But either way, I think the future is going to be the people that ask the right questions, which is kind of hilarious, and and it's a weird thing to say, but it's true. It's going to move the entire industry from an industry of, do you have a skill, to an industry of, do you have the right ideas? When you're asking the AI to create something, what are you asking it to create? Are you asking it to create a whole bunch of like funny images or are you asking it to create something useful, something practical? And I think that that is going to be the new skill. It's going to be people utilizing AI and applying AI to tasks that actually make sense, that are productive, that are adding something to the value of what they're doing. Like, There's always going to be people out there that are going to use AI for dumb stuff, but the people who are out there using AI practically are going to be the ones that are going to get ahead. That is the future that we're going into. And as you can see with this project that I've created, please go to the website, enjoy it. It's fun. If you want to be a game developer, you are a game developer as of today because you can go to that site and say anything you want and it will make a game. And not only will it make a game, you can also update it. So after the game is made, if you want to change anything about that game, you can say, hey, change this about that game. And you can release updates for your AI generated game. There's probably going to be people that are mad that I've created this. There's going to be people that are mad that this exists. But here's the thing. It exists. This is going to happen. And like I said, here in the near future, this is going to be everywhere. And you're going to be able to just talk to your phone and say, hey, I need an app that does this. And it's just going to make it. You can already see Microsoft, Apple, Google, everyone is moving on this. So get ready. It's going to be crazy. If you want to stick around for all of the crazy other cool stuff that is coming down the pipeline, make sure you subscribe because I haven't even shown you the craziest stuff in this video. And I said in the last video, I hadn't even shown you the craziest stuff yet. And yet again, I'm telling you, there is more things I have on the horizon that are going to be extremely disruptive that you're going to want to be here for. All right. Well, um, that's this whole video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.